Man, got around. OG Silver back here. And today, like each and every day, I'm going to share with you guys some stories and experiences, some from my personal life, some that I've seen that will typify victory and glory so you understand the victory that when you want to guarantee you maintain your anal virginity, it's up to you and the glory of your understanding. You have to be in charge of who goes up in you and who doesn't, man. If, you, if you're not built like that, then you have to learn to have boundaries and just say no to anal sex in your cheek. Just say no, like Nancy Reagan used to say. So without further ado, I want to get into the top of today's video, which is going to be mind expanding because you're not going to really understand what I'm going to share with you, but it's going to cause your mind to grow and stretch and make you a better person. Without further ado, top of today's video is in maximum security prison. Do this one thing to guarantee you keep your tight virgin butt cheeks safe and unviolated. Unviolated, untampered, unmessed with. So guys, I want to share this with you, man. Let's get straight to topic video. I want to keep this video five minutes. I'm practicing on condensing everything. So let me tell you like this, dude. Most of my videos, man, are for the general population, but I hope that some gang members are wise enough when their homies aren't around to listen to the videos. Some uh, drug dealers, some murderers, some serial killers, some rapists, some jackers, some drug dealers. They just have a moment of reflection where they say, hey, let me listen to what this dude's saying and then just have an open mind and be like, okay, is what he's saying factual? Well, let me ponder it. I don't never ask you guys to believe everything I'm saying. I'm asking you, man, to listen to my story of what I'm telling you happened to me and then do your own research. Listen to other prison channels. Do Google searches. Listen to documentaries, dude. Don't, a lot of these prison channels, man, they just... Man, they they just telling a bunch of bullshit. Either one, because they're a gang member and they want to fucking perpetuate the gang hoodism. Two, they're a dumb motherfucker. They don't understand there's a better life outside the hood or the varry or the trailer park. Or three, they just want to mislead you because their life is full of shit and fucked off. They want to fuck yours off. Me, I realize when I fucked off my life, I don't want nobody else to fuck their life off. So maybe... I'm on a higher moral road or I'm on a higher vibration or maybe I got remorse. I don't know what it is, but I don't. Why well, want somebody else to suffer what I suffered, man? That's fucking not humane, bro. Maybe because I got a moral conscience. I don't know. Maybe because I'm facing my mortality. But one thing I know for sure, guys, is this, man. If you are a square or a loner or a non-affiliated dude or a weak of heart, soft of body person, and you end up in maximum security prison then this is what I'm going to tell you you got to do, guys. And a lot of guys are going to make comments on here. I don't care. I'm telling you my experience, what I've seen. I've seen a lot of dudes do this, soft, weak dudes. Then just PC up. It's called protective custody, dude. That's what it's called. So whether you watch Shawshank Redemption or Innocent Man or um, Blood and Bone or Lockdown or Compton or South Central, uh, what are some other ones? Avengement? That's a good movie. Avengement's a good movie. Uh, what's the other one, man? Midnight Train Express, Midnight Express, or whatever it's called. Yeah, there's a couple other ones I can't remember, but dude, just Google prison movies. And this one I want you guys to understand. Google prison movies, and if you get a chance, you know, watch them. Quit watching girls twerking on TikTok and Instagram. That ain't going to help you because, look, if you're in the street life, let me tell you one thing I learned when I was in the when I was in the hood. Women, all these hotties, you guys call them hotties and IG Instagram models and they baddies and all that, and you want to swoop them up. And let me tell you something, man. If somebody kick your door in and, and get the blazing and, and blazing glory, them females ain't gonna do shit but hide and scream. And if you get smoked, guess what? They're gonna practice Stockholm syndrome and leave with the guy that smoked you. That's why, man. If you got free time, if you're into if you're into this fucking street life, watch a lot of prison movies. You'll fucking see. I'm not lying to you, man. I'm telling you the truth. Because this is the whole thing, man. If you're if you're a non-affiliated dude or you're weak or you're soft, or maybe you're a gang member and you get in there and you realize you ain't built for that. Because sometimes you're a gang member, but you the young homie and you ain't really like really been like really putting in work. They they kind of grooming you, but you end up like in there. Like maybe this is what happened to what young dude I knew. He joined the gang and everything. 
And then the gang was selling drugs, and this dude was like 15 years old. I, I remember because his dad, you know, called me up asking what he should do. I told him to lawyer up. So anyway, the young boys with the gang, and they was doing a drug deal, and the drug deal went bad. And his gang member homies, he didn't have a gun, but they shot up. So they killed some dudes in the other gang. They killed them. Guess what, man? He got a murder. He got a 187. Why? And this is California. I don't know your state. If you're with a group of five guys and four of them got guns and they kill some people and you there and they round you guys up, you're an accessory, dude. Because they, this is what the, the white judges say, and I'm not being prejudiced, but the white judges say, hey, you know, you could have said to your homeboys, hey, you know what, man, let's not use our weapons to um, do bodily harm to these people. Let's try to talk it out. They say you should have been the voice of reason, but, but since you weren't, you were an accessory, and now... You got a 187 and you have maximum security prison. And so this is the whole thing, man. You're a soft dude. You're not even built for it. You ain't been taking my martial arts course. You ain't been taking kickboxing or Muay Thai MMA. You ain't been getting punched in the face and slammed. You ain't been running every day and jumping rope and shadow boxing and lifting weights, bro. I tell you what, man. You just PC up, man. You just PC up the minute you hit the fucking county jail, dude. You just go up to the correctional officer and you tell him, hey, man, I ain't built for this shit, man. I ain't built for it. I mean, you got to be honest with yourself. You got to be honest. And if you're hard-headed, you know, you're stubborn, you don't want to listen when the dudes start getting at you because this is what happens in the county jail. You got to choose sides, man. Hey, where you from, Holmes? Where you from, Vato? Hey, my man, where you from? Hey, what? What set you represent, brother? Asian dudes. I don't know how Asian dudes talk. I haven't spent a lot of time around Asian dudes in prison. I, I see Asian dudes here, but... You know, it's mostly on a training basis. We're not really talking a lot. So whatever it is they're going to say, they want to find out where you're from, who you're affiliated with. They're going to they're gonna cause you to join them because there's strength in numbers. Right then and there, man, you got to tell the, 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 the this correctional officer you ain't built for it and, and PC up, man. So then if you, if you know, let's say some of the correctional officers are Satanists. They be telling, oh, get the fuck out of here or they'll front you off. Hey, guys, just so you know, he's trying to PC up. Man, the correctional officers, man, they full of shit in there, bro. I even got some homies that's correctional. Let me tell you what happened. There was five dudes that I was a bouncer. I was a bouncer with. Um, two of the guys were in the military with me, and then three of the dudes were just guys I would lift weights with and do steroids with and compete with. And they, I thought they were savages. I thought they was cool. We did martial arts, lift the weights together. But let me tell you what happened. We all signed up to become correctional officers because we was like, oh, man, we can make 100 Gs just babysitting these dumb motherfuckers just before I became a criminal. These dumb motherfucking criminals? Yeah, so I signed up for it. I did the background check, the psychological check, the, the physical check, passed all that. They sent me my uh, my paperwork to go to Galt, California. This is up by Sacramento. That's where the, Sac that's where the California correctional officers boot camp is. I can tell these stories now because I'm not in prison. If they'd have found out when I was in prison, they'd have killed me for real, even though a lot of guys tried to kill me. It wasn't that serious because when they got to talking, oh, man, why are you trying to smoke old dude? Oh, whoop de whoop tried to rob him and he break dude's jaw. Man, that dude don't bother nobody, man. Tell whoop de whoop stay away from that motherfucker. So, but it wasn't like, oh, he's the police. Then I'd have been different because police officers get smoked in prison. So anyway, I got my, my packet to go to Galt, and then I shot some dudes, man. And I never seen the street again, but I never told nobody this story till now. Like a lot of my homies I was in prison with, but didn't even know, you know what I'm saying? But the point I'm making is while I was in prison, I went from, uh, I went from uh, San Quentin to New Folsom. And then from New Folsom, I went to court and my points got dropped. I went to Tracy, Tracy, which is DVI. I get there. The receiving officer was a dude, one of my homies that... We was bouncers, and now he'd been a correctional officer. And he's like, he refused me back on the bus. I went on the bus from DVI down to uh, Soledad because I was, I got, I had people in Salinas. Got down there, one of my other homies, he refused me. Right, so then I ended up in Mule Creek. But here's the story. I want to tell you this, guys. After I did my 10 years and I got out, now my friends that I thought were my friends, they're all corrupt. They've been a correctional officer for 10 years. I ran into one dude that wanted to talk to me. And he's corrupt. Only reason he talked to me, man, he thought I was in the still in the bodybuilding. He wanted to sell me some steroids because a lot of the correctional officers in the goon squad is on steroids. They on juice. He's only he's corrupt. Only reason he talked to me, he figured, oh, dude, gonna 
get back into bodybuilding, but I don't, I don't mess with steroids and stuff anymore. I don't believe it. I know that it's bad for you. But I digress. I just wanted to tell you that because I just noticed, man, a lot of soft, weak dudes, I've seen them piece you up. And even if the guards front you off, man, I told you a story in my last video. And in the county jail and in the day rooms of prisons, everybody drinks coffee because, like, people on drugs, just so you know, there's people, tweakers that are on crystal meth or coke or crack or different drugs like that, amphetamines, they drink a lot of coffee because it's like it, 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 um, it mimics how they feel on, on the dope. So they drink a lot of coffee. But here's the thing, and they eat a lot of top ramen soups, but here's the thing I'm going to tell you for in this video. How do they heat up the coffee and the soups? They got these uh, hot tea kettles, man, that they fill up with water and they heat them up. You know, they heat it up like, you know, like you got a tea kettle at your house. And here's the stupidest thing in prison, dude, and the county jail. I've seen dudes take that hot water, throw it in a dude's face. And let me tell you something. If you think you're a savage, even me, if a dude was to throw some hot water in my face, man, whoo! I try to get that tea kettle out of, out of his hand and shove it up his culo. I'm, that's what I'm thinking. I've never had it happen. But the people I've seen get the hot water thrown in their face and your face gets to boiling and the dude's beating you with the tea kettle. I've never seen anybody keep fighting after that. Now, in my mind, I'm rationalizing. I would. But let me tell you how you PC up. If the guard is being a fuckwad, a dickwad, he, well, he's fronting you off in front of your homies because then your homies is like, man, you PC it up, fool. Or the voice is like, brother, you're PC it up, brother. That's unacceptable. Or the, or the, or the, 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 the Mexicans like, hey, Holmes, that's unacceptable. Hot dough that you. So now you ain't got no choice. Take the hot tea kettle, throw it in their face and beat them and keep beating them. Don't stop beating them. Even if they, well, no, I don't want to tell you that. I, don't want, I wanted to tell you to keep beating them until they stop moving. And, and even if they stop moving, keep beating them. No, just keep beating them until they stop moving. And then just, you know, wave the tea kettle around till the guards come in. Then they'll put you in the shoe program. You'll be in the shoe with me. You'll see me at the next cell. Well, back then, you know, you'll see me in the next cell. And then you just say, hey, man, I threw some hot water in this dude's face, and I beat him. And I say, why you do that? Because, man, I don't want to go back to general population. And then this is said the whole key, because some prisons, they won't allow you to piece up. But if you're in a shoe, I want to tell you this, and I'm going to part this video. The warden always comes down, and they have an administration com committee that, that that goes over your, uh, I think it's called a 602 or whatever your, I forget the numbers of what it is, but it's your infraction report. It says what you did, how much time you got in the shoe, and are you remorseful? And then you got to tell them like this, hey, you know what, man? If you let me out of here, I'm going to kill your mother and fuck her. How do you feel about that, Mr. Warden? And then I'm going to fucking sodomize your fucking wife. You just got to say some foul shit, and they'll just keep you in the shoe, keep you in the shoe, keep you in the shoe. And then until, you're t until they transfer you to another prison, and then hopefully the dudes will leave you alone. And if not, man, if you if if you're if there's a kite that's been sent, you keep PCing up, dude, until you get to a prison where they just keep you in PC. And then when you parole out, you go to straight and narrow and stay out of trouble. So whether you like this video or not, I like you guys to thumbs up it because I feel it's good information for even though you gang members be like, no, man, he's telling you wrong information. Maybe you should learn some shit how to decommission from the gang and quit trying to confuse junctures and send them down the path of darkness. So for you square dudes that found this educational informative, thumbs up the video, leave a comment, man. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel because you too shot up at me because of my language. And more importantly, man, share the video. Until next time. Peace out.